Bueno? Bueno. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's hit the start button. All right, Mike, we are at the 50 mark. We'll start it in 10 seconds on this. That way it'll give him a chance to just cut all that out. Five, four, don't sweat. It's just a conversation. <laughs> just relax. All right, guys, with that, we are out here at the SEMA show. This is 2019 out here at Aero Detailing Products, booth number 12727 out here in North Hall. Actually, just west of the Sada booth that was uh, that I was there earlier on, guys. You've heard me talk about the detail products that uh, that Arrow has. They've expanded their line, uh, including a lot of their new ceramic stuff that they've got. They got stuff for wheels, brakes, interiors, glasses, and all that marine grade stuff. Uh, really good stuff. And you know, of course, I'm still going to be plugging the Fusion Wax. I absolutely love that stuff. But uh, <laughs> they're going to get tired of me plugging that. We've got other stuff. Yeah. Well, I really like that. Uh, but today, I'm actually uh, this one. We're going to do something a little bit different. We're still going to be talking paint. We're going to We'll still be talking about body uh, body panels and stuff like that a little bit, but it's cool. When do you get a chance to uh, actually talk to monster truck drivers? <laughs> this is going to be fun. So we've actually got Eric and Rick, father son team, uh, Swanson. Tell us a little bit about yourselves and and who is who. What do you do? And let's get into it. Rick's the old man, the guy needing to retire, bad back, messed up, you know, all that good stuff. Done, been there, done that. Eric's the young kid that. Nothing's a, nothing's unaccomplishable. Backflips, moonwalks, whatever you want, he can do. Very awesome. Now, how old are you? You're, you're a young kid. Uh, yeah. I'm and I feel actually, weird saying that because uh, I'm in my mid thirties. Yeah, I'm, I'm 24, <laughs> but I've actually been driving 10 years, so I'm almost a veteran in our sport. <laughs> You've been doing it 10 years. Yeah. Okay. Tell. We're going to go ahead and just jump right into that. Ten, ten, how the hell did that happen? Uh, my dad's been driving for 24 years, and I didn't have a choice. <laughs> no, I say um, spoiled. <laughs> I, uh, I used to race dirt bikes growing up, and then I want to do a little bit something a little bit cooler, a little bit safer when you crash. So mm -hmm. I figured might as well do the monster truck. Of course, because that's safer. We're going to get you up in the air in big ass tires. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. I mean, when do you get to drive that kind of something with uh, with that kind of power and all that though? I mean, that that's freaking neat. That well, is freaking neat. It's real interesting in our industry. You know, everybody asks, where do you practice? Do you, you must have a track. You must have this to do, you know, so you can practice. And, you know, the first couple times you set up, you find a place where you can go practice maybe once. And then you find out, well, you weren't supposed to be there in the first place. It's illegal or whatever. So basically everything we learn on how to drive and what to drive, it's at the event. Uh, the very first time Eric did a backflip, me and him walked up to the backflip ramp and, I, you know, I believe you need to hit it this way. He put his input in. I said, now let's go talk to somebody that's actually done it. Yeah. You know, and that's how we got it. And he went out there, he nailed his first backflip. Well, what was that like for you? I mean, I obviously, come. It's when you come up to it, it's a straight up wall. So you kind of have to judge your speed. Don't want to go too fast. It's going to rotate too fast. But it's, too a, it's, slow, a, it's a straight wall. Right. Too <laughs> slow, it's really going to be bad. You know what I mean? You know what happens but, when you drive into a wall? Yep. I've done a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, so like he said, we, we kind of figured, well, maybe this speed will work or maybe it won't. So we went, talked to a couple guys that are good at it, and it actually worked. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so it was a good so this thing. So this is part of your part of your routine whenever you, whenever you go out and you're doing this, you can, you can hit it. Yeah, so we do what we call a two-wheel skill. Okay. And that's basically where I kind of, kind of common sense, but you do anything that you can do on two wheels. So we do a stoppy or we get it on the front end of the truck or we mm -hmm. bicycle it. We drive across the track on the two side wheels. And then after that we do, so we do that and then we do a racing round, basically bracket racing and then a freestyle okay. is with the back flips where we kind of, basically no the object rules. is almost a crash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give me one second because I just knocked off my microphone from a good Miss Cheryl over there. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love being live. So anyways, now tell me about you. How did you get into doing this? Because this is something that you want to do as a kid. You see the trucks, you see the you know the, the, the monster trucks and running and all that. How did that how did that become a career? Well you see, I was one of those kids that didn't listen in school. <laughs> and instead of going out and getting a good job like your brother, <laughs> I was more like the kid. Probably like you saying, I'll make it on my own, damn it. I don't need your help. And then I started, I had, when I was 16, I bought a Bronco, 1970 Bronco from my grandparents. Oh, nice. Everybody laughed at me the first day I took it to school because it was 
phone off because they called me Merlin Perkins because he had one on, I think it was Wild Kingdom or whatever his TV show was. As I got older, started fixing it up, doing this, doing that. Um, it ended up in 180 magazines worldwide. Oh, wow. Then I started building trucks for the Ford booth here at SEMA mm -hmm. back in the late 80s. I uh, did that for eight years, and people that were giving me product kept asking me, well, what's next? What, what are you going to do next? How are you going to top off last year? Well, one thing led to another. I, I'm like, these monster trucks get paid to show up. Yeah. Well, hot damn, this will be a cool side gig. You know, and that's, that's kind of what it was. My wife was going to drive it with her long blonde hair. She wouldn't have to do nothing. She'd get out there, flip her hair off, you know, take the helmet, flip her hair around. Boom, I'd get paid. Have a nice day. Yeah, exactly. We wouldn't break things, you know. I had this all figured out. Put her in the truck when we finished it. She drove it one time. She goes, I hate it. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Mistake was made. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> now, now, tell me about you. How long, you say you've been doing this 10 years now. Yeah. So you got started 14? 14 was my first paid gig, so first professional show. Congratulations on that. <laughs> Thank you. So tell, tell me, how do, I don't even know what the hell to ask on that because when I was 14, <laughs> I that was- drive a car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, how, how do you even, that's, and, and like what you were talking about is going in and you know, how do you practice? You know, you must have a, have a track or something like that. That's, that's a whole different thing to go about on there. So, you know, just, yes. I guess just to tie it in with what we do here with Booth Talk, you know, tell me, tell me about the, the body and the paint and stuff like that. Do you guys, you know, every one of them have different graphics and stuff like that. Are you, you do you guys do vinyl wraps? Do you do paints? You know, how do you guys do it? You know, we're really proud on image and making sure our stuff looks nice. So the only way of doing it is paint. Okay, well, you made a friend out of me. And, and probably a lot of people that listen to this probably just breathe a sigh of relief because a lot of folks in my industry, uh, we do not like the vinyl wraps because it's like, seriously? <laughs> seriously? But but in all fairness, they have their place. Some of the graphics are vinyl on the side. Yeah, okay. But you got to remember, in all fairness to us, we if the body lasts more than yeah. two weekends, we're on a roll. Yeah, you get your money out of it. You're good to go. Now, what about you? Tell, tell me, tell me, where are you planning on taking this? Is this going to be long-term career? Are you planning on being in it for the long haul? You know, is this just something for yeah. leading to something bigger or what? I mean, we're always looking for bigger and better things, you know. But I mean, I've been in, like I said, ten years. So, and he's been doing it for twenty-four. So, we're, I'm looking to expand it, get better, look into newer options mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Now, twenty-four. He's been doing it ten. We were talking a little bit before, you've got one more year and then you're going to hang it up. Oh, you're, going, yeah. you're going to call it at 25 and, and that's it. You know, if this was TV and everybody could see, my walker sitting right over here. <laughs> and that's what happens at this age. You need your walker, you know, you need your all your medicine, you know, I got my pill box in the morning. No, it's not that bad. <laughs> I do have, I have two squished discs and two herniated discs from mm -hmm. driving because when I started driving, we, one, we didn't have the seats we have for today, which make it a whole lot safer. The suspensions were nowhere near, they were the same parts, but not the same configuration. Okay. Because people don't understand that. It's, it's, that looks like a truck that, you know, you drove at the beginning. Yes, but what we learned is, one, how to valve the shocks. Mm -hmm. Two, different oils inside the shock, different nitrogen pressure, different accumulator size, and all this, at the beginning, we didn't know any of it, you know. The same shock we have today that cycles 30 inches, back then, because of the way the shock was put together, even though it was the same pieces, it was the top accumulator versus the bottom accumulator, we only had maximum 20 inches of travel out of a 30 inch shock. Oh wow. So things were really different. So this is stuff from your experience that now you're able to take on and actually right. start capitalizing on just from the years of experience and seeing how things have, have changed and evolved and start making things better off right. of that. Right, and I mean, even exactly. show to show, we adjust shock to make it, I mean, each time we go out almost, it can be better and better. Yeah. So just over the evolution of the monster trucks, it's it's crazy how much it has changed. See, and, that, and that's just neat to see right there just because of the father-son dynamic. Because, because you're doing, you've been doing it for 24, 25 years, He's coming up in it. You know, you have the experience to pass on to him and help him. You know, hey, 
this has happened, this is what it is, this is what's you know what's changed and what's you know where things are going, things are evolving to getting better. You know, you've seen that evolution. He's starting to see just as it's changing for I'm sure you've seen the change in it just oh, as yeah. you've been. Even in. If, since I've been driving we've been changing shocks and even seats and head gear for our neck restraints have changed a lot mm -hmm. since I've been driving. Well and what's really cool is I mean at my age I'm fifty two years old. My reaction time isn't what it once was. <laughs> right. But with what I know about the trucks and with how he drives, I can tune the truck and change a few things around to help him out. And mm -hmm. I mean, I've got, it's not one picture of him 40 feet in the air. It's jump after jump 40. I've got oh, a wow. picture of him <laughs> wow. in the second level of Anaheim Stadium. Oh Jesus! Let Could me help soon. Let, yeah. let me let me help you out because I'm, I'm a dad. So, looking at that from the from the outside outsider's perspective, you don't think of that whenever you're a kid and, and doing stuff like that. You're out there having a ball and all right. that. But I'm pretty certain, you know, from the father's side of it, you're going, "Oh God, that's my kid up there. Oh, please land it. Oh, please." You know what? Everybody asks that. Are you scared of your with him driving? And quite honestly, the backflips and everything he does in the big air. I've never worried. I've always worried because I have back issues, even though I know my stuff wasn't set up as good because we've right. learned so much. I still, that's always in the back of your mind. You don't want your kid to get hurt, obviously. But I think the only time I've ever been really scared was he did a backflip in San Diego and the backflip ramp broke. Whoa. down and came straight to and, his cage. And you rely on the backflip ramp so much because when you hit it, it's like a wall, like I said, so you push off of it. So if that You're wanting off, that to throw back. Yeah, exactly. so if that push off isn't there, it's yeah, going to hurt. Yeah, it's going to suck no matter what. And we're on two-way communications when he's driving. Yeah. Um, so when he landed, you know, first thing I did, let it settle for a second. I got on the radio. I'm like, Eric, Eric, talk to me. You okay in there? Give me Nothing. something. <laughs> Nothing. Oh. And I'm like, well, maybe he got out. Well, you know, at these big events that we're doing, you know, there's 50, 60,000 people in the yeah. stadium. It's not like you're going to go run across. Even though it's your kid, if I went running across, one of the officials would tackle me because that isn't my <laughs> position to be right, at. You know? Right. So, but they gave me the thumbs up so I knew he was all right. Yeah. And they worked. They had to pull the truck around, flip it back to its tires. It flipped back to its tires and I heard it start up. And I'm like... Holy crap, he's, been, he's good. He's hanging upside down this whole time, you know? So when he got back, I'm like, hey, why didn't you answer him? He goes, I didn't, didn't hear nothing. I said I was all right. He hit so hard that it unplugged the radio. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. So that was the one time I was scared because I got no reaction until yeah. the official gave me the thumbs up so I knew where it was. And okay. at that point, you just breathe and say, okay, well, come on, move, do something here. <laughs> do something, yeah. come on. <laughs> I, I got the okay, but I need the visual now. <laughs> and as a parent, he also told me right before he went out, he goes, I don't feel good, I'm not going to do nothing big. And then that happens. And then that happens. Yeah. So, the ram gone away. <laughs> good so job. Then, uh, I always want him to tell me, I'm going to do big, because at least I know what to expect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now I know just working in the body shops, and it's, it's probably like this on, on different, you know, other, other different, uh, uh, what do I want to say, different job titles and stuff like that, is when things are going good, you never admit when things are going good because crap always happens. Oh, yeah. And that's right. right. And it's always that guy comes in, man, it's a great day. Yeah, mm, why? <laughs> no, 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 no. And then it always happens. That Did that happen that day? Um, uh, maybe. <laughs> I would say probably. <laughs> it always seems to on stuff like that. Oh, so yeah. it's, right. it's, it's like that in the shops. I figured it might as well be on everything else as well. So. And you also have some influences in our industry. He has a couple influences, and that's what I'll call them. Right. That they want one up each other. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. No pressure, right? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. So there are some people that, you know, he's not allowed to talk to before mm -hmm. the event, even though I know he does, because I see all the stupid things they try. <laughs> you know? but that, and then on your side, though, that's probably half the fun, because you're you're seeing where you can push the truck to, right. what and you can do, and, 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 and at the long run, you know, at the end of the day, improve what you can do. Right, and we, we always, we have a couple of my buddies that we push each other, and we're like, well, if he can do this job, I can do it twice as harder. So, <laughs> and it sometimes works and sometimes ends badly. So, yeah. you, you never know. Well, yeah. Yeah, that, that's all part of it. And right. like I said, I mean, you're 24. You're one to stay in it for the long haul. 
I think that's awesome. Getting started at 14, getting paid for it, that's that's freaking awesome. When all of us are sitting there just wanting to drive, you know, just drive our first car just down the road. That, that's all, and you're in a freaking monster truck. Right. So, if uh, if people want to follow y'all, if y'all want to, if they want to, you know, see what you guys are doing, what you're up to, stuff like that, social media, anything like that, how do they reach you guys? Uh, Obsession Racing, uh, Obsession Race Team is on Instagram. It's also on a YouTube channel. Uh, Obsession Monster Trucks is on Facebook. Uh, Swanson103 is Eric's uh, personal Instagram. There's all kinds of ways. We also uh, have the, we have an Obsessware Instagram, which is a clothing line we just started. And what's, what's the name of that again? Obsessware. Obsessware? Yeah. Okay. It's Instagram and Facebook, and we're trying to get, we're starting to get that going good, so. Okay. Um, I can do other race team shirt. I can do other people's shirt. So we went out and bought a t-shirt shop, and then one of the deals of, with the t-shirt shop is with him driving and the reputation he's getting as the young kid that just, the fearless kid that'll go out and do anything. Yeah. Um, we just did the Obsessed Wear brand clothing, and it's all horsepower, horsepower apparel. Okay. So this is across the board, though, in that case. If you're if you're a motorhead, then you're good oh, to yeah. go. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, there you go. Awesome. We got all the adult shirt sayings. I mean, they're not bad, but yeah. if you have a dirty mind, yeah. you grin. <laughs> we're in the automotive industry. When does that actually happen? Never. No. No. Yeah. I mean, we're a bunch of blue-collar, easygoing. You know, no, that never happens. So. Well, you know, we have the one shirt that, you know, everybody asks how a motor works. You know, you tell them it's a four-stroke. Well, what's the four strokes? Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. And it works. Uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, I appreciate y'all being on here. Thank you for, uh, for joining the podcast. We'll... Uh, Again, this is guys, this is SEMA Show 2019. This is booth 12727 Aero Detailing Products, and uh, we'll check back in for another part of the SEMA Files. Guys, thanks. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. It was fun. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, it's just a conversation. That's there you it. Go. Thank you.